and you can see I got the Hell Camino in the shop right now. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Um, I'll go ahead and show you. I did get her registered and insured for once. One of my vehicles actually has both of those. Um, I do need an oil change badly on this. The oil is oh, blacker than midnight inside a coffin. So when I, I checked it when I was driving it home, I was down a quart. So let's hope she don't burn oil. I'll have to check it again, see where she's at. Um, what else? Clean. I need to clean the inside of it. It's a mess in there. Mud. They must went wheeling in. Left the windows open. Back windows covered. I can't see out of it. Um, let's see what else. I did pick up seatbelts for it. Oh, come on. There we go. For some odd reason, both seatbelts have been cut. I don't know why. Going through a windshield is my least favorite thing to do. Uh, yeah, as you can see, definitely needs a good scrubbing. Well, that's fine. Customized dash. I also, as you can see, need to align the hood a little bit better. That's higher than the other. And well, look at this paint job, though. You can definitely tell it's done professionally. The way you can tell is, well, you know, the body work that they did and uh, all the overspray on the windshield. Driver's side, you can definitely see the big old gap, but there's so much overspray on this, I couldn't even find the VIN on it when I had to get my VIN verified for my state. You see where I took a razor blade and cleaned it up a bit. Eh, I guess you can call that redneck tint. I don't mind it. That's some nice body work right there too. <laughs> But yeah. So I'm gonna get started on the oil change on the truck, car. What do you think an El Camino is? Car, truck, a ute if you're Australian. I don't know. Comment what you think. All right, let's see if I can even get this hood open this time. Oop, of course. She sticks a bit. You can see the hood is so unaligned, it doesn't want to open. Whoops. Broke something. Oh. Oh. All right. She's finally open. So when I bought this in upstate New York, it was a quart low, and I had to dump dump some in so I'm hoping it's not leaking out anywhere I don't see any spots in the in the driveway or anything like that so we shall find out for low or not a little dark as you can see ah still good level hasn't go down so that's a good sign so now let's just change oil oh, oh man that's on there come on oh. what they JB weld this thing on Oh no, I don't like that. I think I broke my ratchet too. Oh! Oh! Finally! Jeez. Oh! There we go. Now let's hope there's not. Any metal shavings? I have no idea 
why that was on so hard. So I went out and bought a new drain pan plug. You see, it kind of broke that little plastic bit. Not too sure if I need it or not, but oh well, it's new and these threads, uh, they're a little bagged out, not bad. But these, much better, much more sharp. So, throwing that in now. Okay, the bolt's in, now it's time to get the oil filter out. And this is probably where I get covered in oil. Great, this will be fun. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh no. You got a leaker. Oh. There we go. Got myself a nice little CarQuest oil filter here. Better lube up that. Well, they say clean oil, but dirty oil works just as good. Lube that seal up. In tight somewhat good enough all right let's lower her down got like 20 gallons of oil in this big old motor so I'm just dumping Fram oil in it I bought up at Advanced Auto I'm pretty sure it's not the same as the oil filters that everyone disapproves of I think it's just uh, CarQuest oil rebranded something like that I don't know it was cheap affordable and it's going in the car So this big block calls for six and a half quarts, which I'm really surprised. Huh. Some stuff on that. So, for some odd reason, it's hard to find the gallon jugs now. I don't know what's happening. I heard there might be an oil shortage, so you guys might want to stock up on oil. Let's see, here's the first one. Little bit of spillage. But there's one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. And a half. Done. All right, now the oil's all changed. I think I should do something about this. Uh, hold on, can you see it? Yeah, probably not, but that whole, whole mechanism moves. This one doesn't, that one does. And I'm pretty sure that's why the hood has such a hard time opening. So, I'm gonna get on that now. Well, I tighten that back bolt down and uh, the hood. And it's pretty tight now. Just gotta see if it lines up with the body. But it's just a little bagged out. No big deal, it comes with the age. It's like soaking these down, I got that one. There we go. Don't forget to lube up your hinges. I don't want a bent hood. Well, it lines up a little better. Try this side. Eh, well, I think I'll adjust it later. So now I guess it's time to go on and put these new seat belts in. So I picked these up from seatbeltsplus.com. They have basically all your seatbelt needs, I would say. They had mine. And I just wanted a lap belt for, um, drivers and passenger side so they had it they're pretty pretty affordable 
And they have tons of colors you can pick from. I got, I think, navy blue. That's it. Yep, navy. So, I'm going to go ahead and throw those in. The more I look at these seat belts, they're pretty, pretty good looking belts. Not bad. And made right in the good old US of A. Right down in Jupiter, Florida. Yeah, these are going to look good. Hey now, break this bolt free. All right, that's off now. Here's a cut seat belt. And let's get this new one, this new one put in. All right, one side is in. Oh, easy now. Time for this side. Wow, look how good these look. These things are really nice. I didn't think it'd be that nice. Look at that. I wonder if these would be approved for any type of racing. I would definitely drag race this car. I shall find out. I have to head up to Lebanon Valley or something like that. Don't mind how filthy the seats are. Whole thing is still filthy. So I guess on to the next one over here. So I just finished installing that seat belt right there. I had to take out that bolt, but these things are hardwired in. This might cut them out. I'm pretty sure they don't do anything up there anyways so i'll just uh snip those out and uh i should be good but i guess up next is to clean the cabin and the glass a bit cold in the shop with my jacket on you see my breath but overspray is just basically redneck tinting that's how i see it anyways but i have a little too much for my liking on this car, so I'm gonna see if some spray away and a clean razor blade will take take hopefully most of it off. So let's see what happens. I can hear it. Wow. You can see it coming off. Just hoping not scratching the glass. Wow. I mean, look at that. I don't know if you can see it, but that's all over spray. Huh. Well, it did help, but there's still a lot of overspray, so there's a lot of a lot of work that needs to be done to clean everything up. There's even overspray on the inside. Huh? That's that's a new one for me. Look at all that overspray, man. That's only just that part. Still a lot more to go. Can't wait to get on that side. Well, the outside looks much better. Look at that corner window. That cleaned up nicely. But now it's time to get on the inside. See, there's that overspray I was talking about. Probably hit that again. I'm hoping there's not overspray on the inside of the wind on the windshield. That's gonna be kind of annoying. So. We'll see what happens when I run the razor blade across that. So I think that's as good as I'm going to get it. Look at you can even see my reflection now. But now I tried a little over here. You can see the spot that I did razor blade. But yeah, I have a lot of work ahead of me. So wish me luck.
windshield's all clean. Looks a lot better. You can actually see all the imperfections in the glass. So that's pretty cool. Um, I got myself pretty good though. Didn't even feel it. Now it's, uh, it didn't really bleed. Must be all the paint chips clogging it up. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, I'm just gonna finish up the uh, driver's side window. Maybe start cleaning the interior a little bit better. Get all that mud and gunk out from the back window. So, here we go. So this is some of the loose stuff I pulled out of the cab. Uh, it's just random plastic pieces. I, I think that's to the column. That's what it looks like. Shifter goes right there. Something like that. But these are all just panels, I believe. That's the fuse box. Some sockets. A Taco Bell gift card. I wonder if there's anything left on on that. So rechargeable flashlight. That's definitely worth it. Two uh, crank handles. Something to the Syracuse Nationals of last year. Keep this stub. Kind of cool. Bag. I did throw out um, some. There's a lot of Taco Bell wrappers in there. I already tossed out. It, the stench was getting pretty awful. So I threw that out be beforehand. But never got. Oh, what's this? I don't, I don't know what that is. I got, hey, three, three sockets. That's pretty cool. These are the heavy duty kind. So you can put on an impact gun. But yeah. Interiors. Uh, well cleaned out of all the loose stuff, but now it's time. Oh, there's some nuts behind there. Now it's time to, uh, I guess, start cleaning and vacuuming. Let's see what happens. Okay, everything is basically about vacuumed up in here. So now it's time to work on this back window. It is filthy. Someone definitely went mud in and left the windows down, I'm pretty sure, and it just covered the inside of here. So I don't know, all that, I don't know if you can see it, like all that speckle. I'm hoping that it's not like weld burns because that's what kind of feels like. And it's brown looking. So, let's see what happens when I just soak this down. Well, the mud and everything is coming off, but those spots are still in here. So, oh, hey, that's loose. Look at that. Yeah, don't worry. I'll get some caulk. Caulk in place. Should be factory good. So, in this corner right here. Let's work my way down. Oh, need some more spray juice. There we go. Oh, that, oh man, that is. Yeah, you see all the, the silicone here. I don't know, it must have dried up and pulled away. But it's moving a lot. Oh well. Oh, it's tight squeezing here. But yeah, you can see all the, the, sp the speckle. Uh, I don't know. It's not really coming off my finger. I wonder if someone using a, a cutting wheel in here. Because I know if you use a cutting wheel inside near glass, you hit the glass with all the sparks, you will get pitment and then it will turn to rust because it's so hot and melts into the glass. And then uh, 
it oxidizes and causes rust. Then you get those little speckle things. So maybe I'll try taking a flat blade to it, see what happens. So we took a flat blade to um, this half over here and you see it actually cleaned up pretty decent. There are some, ah, uh, there's no way you guys can see that. There are some spots, but they are on the outside. There's some pitting on the inside, but that's uh, no big deal. You still see some on, on the outside here. But yeah, I'm just gonna finish this up. All right, everyone, I'm gonna wrap the video up here. It's getting late, it's getting a little cold. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, I'd really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button. And yeah, now I want to see if uh, this Taco Bell card works. Hopefully there's something on it. Really use the Crunchwrap Supreme right now. So, I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.